Hello all, welcome to the Linux rootkits for Red Blue Teams course at Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we'll look at what we are planning to cover in this course. Okay, so most of you must have heard about rootkits, but if you kind of search for rootkits, what you would end up finding is either very high level information or source code which might largely be undocumented and most of the time it might only end up working for really older versions of the kernel. So this is where this course is going to go into the absolute low level details of how Linux rootkits work. So we'll begin with understanding a little bit of kernel internals, how we can browse through the kernel sources and get to interesting juicy information when we need to. And we we'll look at how to write your own kernel modules from the very basics, right? From a hello world program, all the way to more complicated ones. Uh, and after that, we'll also look at some kernel data structures, procfs, sysfs, character device drivers, etc. Just so that you have enough background required to understand how rootkits work. Now with this solid background in place, we will look at the very first low level activity which rootkits might end up doing, which is enumerate processes and play with process structures. So we will look at the task structure, what it contains and how a rootkit can manipulate that. From there on, we'll also look at how rootkit creators end up hiding their creations from plain view. Uh, we'll understand system calls, how system calls hijack work, how can you go ahead and toggle memory to become read-write uh, so that you can go ahead and write critical parts of the table. And with that, we'll move on to hooking syscalls where we'll see how rootkits can show hide processes uh, can show hide files and even go ahead and protect processes created by it. Now after that we will look at hijacking just about any system call K probes and then move on to notifier chains. Now in notifier chains we are going to be looking at how a rootkit may create a system wide key logger how it may monitor network and USB events so that it is knows what's happening on the system and can react accordingly. Uh, then we'll move on to how a rootkit could run user space applications and you know create its own backdoors, etc. And from that point, we will jump into the Linux kernel network stack basics, understand about things like NetFilter and how they could be abused by a rootkit to create network-based backdoors, command and control, etc. Now, after discussing all of this, we will look at the state of rootkit detection today. Uh, we'll even try out a couple of anti-rootkit detection software which is available, and then talk about how defenders can go about hardening the kernel and other security best practices to mitigate rootfits from either infecting the system or even if they do, how you can go about detecting them. So as you can see, this is a very, very low level detailed oriented course. Uh, it is going to be a lot of fun, I can assure you. So where can red and blue teams use these courses? Uh, now, if you look at what is happening today, when we hear about nation states and you know criminal gangs going ahead and breaking into systems and whatnot, the key thing you would realize is attackers end up using custom code. And this is really where a lot of security products, you know, if you've been red teaming or pen testing for quite some time, know that still rely on signature based detection or a known bad. Now, I know everyone uh, ends up saying that, you know, they do some kind of heuristic zero day detection and whatnot. But if you've been in this industry long enough, you know that most of that stuff uh, doesn't always work as advertised. So the whole idea is to equip red teams with custom code they can play, change, modify, 
so that they can test their network's preparedness against custom rootkit attacks. Now, this is where the blue team can also use the same code and try and understand how attackers really work when it comes to backdooring Linux systems and servers with rootkits. They'll also be able to understand the shortcomings of existing rootkit detectors and techniques by which they can harden their systems. So what is the prerequisite? Now, you need to have at least a working knowledge of Linux. You should be able to, you know, do all the basic commands like creating directory, opening files, uh, and all of that. At the very same time, of course, you know, rootkits is highly technical and most of it is going to be, you know, looking at code. So if you would like to go ahead and use these samples, modify them for your own networks to do tests, you would need to know at least some basic C programming. Uh, specifically, you would also need to understand data structures like linked lists, etc. Now, does that mean that if you do not have programming experience, this course is absolutely useless or you cannot follow it at all? Not at all. I made it extremely simple so that if you are someone who's not a programmer but would all like to understand how these you know, digital rootkit creatures work, then you should be able to create a lab environment, compile and install all the code samples so that you can test out and learn about rootkits in a lot more detail uh, than just probably a definition on Wikipedia or, or, or some other place, right? So there is a little bit here for everybody. If you're a, if you're a good programmer, hey, you know, this will give you wings. If not, you'll at least understand at a low level how these uh, rootkits work. Now the target architecture I'm going to be using is x86 64-bit systems and an Ubuntu 17.04 LTS is going to be the operating system of choice. All the code samples should pretty much work uh, you know, on, on any Linux system, on any x86-64 system. Uh, we are going to be using the latest version of the kernel, and we'll talk about that when we go ahead and set up the lab. Okay, last but not the least, a disclaimer. Uh, it is important to note that I've created this course purely from an educational standpoint. The idea is, you know, as I've been teaching a lot of these courses all over the world for almost the past seven to eight years, uh, I have students asking me more about rootkits and, you know, low-level attacks. Now, there is really no way to understand a low-level attack without looking at source code of how that is actually implemented. And hence, source code samples are a necessary evil without which I don't think I could teach this course the way it needs to be taught. But having said that, this source code is only to be used to learn and to test your own networks and to test your own preparedness. This is not to be used for any other nefarious purposes. And if you do have any such plans, I would recommend not to view or use this course. Okay. So with that in place, I'm really excited about this course. I hope you are too. And I'll see you in the next video where we begin setting up our lab environment. Thank you and have a great day ahead.